GHS 
greatest man I know. Oh, 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 oh. he's the greatest man I know. Oh, 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 oh. greatest man I Jesus is the greatest man. If you don't praise the Lord. Church for Bible study, I said praise the Lord. I welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that the heart to study, the Lord will grant every one of us in Jesus' name. As he blesses the teacher, he'll bless those who are learning. Give me a good, good amen. amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for the joy of serving you. And thank you, Lord, for the Spirit mightily present here tonight. We're asking, Lord, that your Spirit will reveal all that you have for us in your word tonight in Jesus' name. We pray it will settle in every heart, settle in every mind. So that we face will rise up hearing the word, living on the word, believing the word, we will do your will in our lives in Jesus' name. Bless your people tonight and use us as channels of blessings for people around us. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to John chapter 16. John chapter 16, tonight we're studying from verse 23 all through to verse 33. John chapter 16, verse 23. And in that day shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Either two of ye ask nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive that a joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs. But I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day, he shall ask in my name. And I say not unto you, that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and I have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and I'm come on into the world. Again, I, ha I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, ye is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Somebody there, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. As you look at those verses tonight that we have read together, the title of the message tonight is The Father's Answer to Prayer 
in the Son's name. The Son of God is Jesus. It's our Savior. It's our Redeemer. It's the one that came to reveal heaven and the heart of the Father unto us. And when the Son speaks, the Father listens. And when we pray in the name of Jesus, the Father answers. The Father's answer to prayer in the Son's name. I want you to draw your mind to the situation of the disciples at this time. The disciples were receiving great revelation, which will be of tremendous benefit to them and to the whole church after the departure of the master. Look at what it said in verse uh, 23. And in that day, he was talking about the future. He was repairing them for the day that was coming, a period coming when he will not be physically present with them. The Lord was preparing them for the extended period of his physical absence from the earth. He was showing them that things will be as good as when he had been with them. Indeed, in fact, he told them that things will be much, much better than the time he had been with them in the physical Look at that verse 23. In that day, he shall ask me nothing. You see, before this time, if they had any need, they will ask the Lord Jesus Christ directly. And the Lord was telling them, there's going to be a change. There's going to be an alteration. And there's going to be a new thing. You will not ask me directly anymore. You'll be asking the Father, but you ask the Father in my name. And he told them, when they thought that might be terrible, that we can't come to you directly, we can't ask you directly, we have to ask the Father, and then it will pass through your name, and Jesus gave the idea to them, actually, it will be better, and actually, it will be greater, actually, it will be deeper. He said there's something greater coming for them, something higher coming for them, something richer coming for them, something wider coming for them, something fuller coming to them. Because now, whatsoever they asked in the name of Jesus, he said, the Father will grant unto them. But they must not slide back to the old idea of going to Christ directly. You know what they did? When Jesus was with them, they always went to him directly. Or sometimes they went to the Father directly. And Jesus said, that is being nullified. You'll not go to the Father directly without Christ. You'll not go to Christ directly. You will now have this new approach. Let's look at the old approach. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 7, and we're looking at verse 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Here was uh, what, you know, they had known before, but now Jesus said, there's a little alteration. There's a little modification. We're looking at Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Look at this now. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread directly, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish directly, will he give him a serpent? Look at this. If he then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? In this place, there was uh, no uh, mentioning of uh, going through the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why? Because he has not told them that. But now he said, in that day, after I've gone, after my departure, there will be a little change. Yes, you'll still pray. Yes, you'll still ask. You'll be asking the Father, but you ask the Father in my name. Come to Mark chapter 10. In Mark chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 35. Mark chapter 10, we're looking at verse 35. Here, the sons of Zebedee, they were going to ask, but now they were asking, they were going to ask Jesus directly. 
It says in Mark chapter 10, verse 35, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, come unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. He was telling them, you can't do this anymore. You will not come to me directly and say, do for us whatever we desire, whatever we ask, whatever we want. Anything you want now, you'll talk to the Father, but you'll pass it through me. Look at verse 36, it says, and he said unto them, what would ye that I should do for you? Descend unto him, grant unto us, that we may sit one on thy, on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And then the story goes on. The point is, they either ask the Father directly or they ask Jesus directly. But Jesus said, in that day that I have come, when the Holy Ghost is come, there's going to be a new approach to prayer, a new approach to asking, a new approach to demanding something from heaven and something for yourself, something for your friends, something for your family, something for the local church, something you know, that you want anytime, anywhere. You're going to talk to the Father and then you pass it through me. We're looking at Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. This is the old thing they used to do. Luke chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 23. Luke chapter 8, verse 23. It says, But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him. You see that? That's what he was trying to correct. That's what he was trying to adjust. That's what he was telling them. It will no longer be like that. You will talk to the Father. But you'll talk to the Father in my name. And whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Look at that verse 24. They did directly. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuilt the wind and the raging of the water. And this ceased, and there was a great, and there was a calm. Peace in your soul. Yeah. Calmness in your family. Yeah. Answer to your prayer in Jesus' name. Yeah. But you see the point here now. He said, after I have lived, it's actually expedient for you. It's actually better for you. It's going to be a richer experience for you. And you're going to have a wider, a wider level of answers to prayer. Because now, in that day, you will not ask me directly. You will ask the Father in my name. After his departure, they will ask the Father in his name. How, how is that? They will ask, number one, as sons in the family. Sons of the family, they were born again, they were children of God, and as sons of the family, they will ask the Father, He's their Father, and then they'll ask through the Lord Jesus Christ, their Savior and their Lord. Not only that, number two, they will ask as kingdom citizens, Thy kingdom come. And because they had repented, they came out of the kingdom of darkness and out of the kingdom of iniquity and evil and they have not been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. They were children of God and kingdom citizens. They were asked as kingdom citizens and they will know that all the provision in the kingdom was their right. All the provision in the kingdom was their inheritance and yet asking as kingdom citizens they will ask the Father in his name. They will ask as ministers because he was committing a great ministry to their hands. And whatever they will need in ministry and whatever they will request for ministry, they will ask as the ministers of God. They will
will ask us help us these were people that were helping in the work of the kingdom in soul winning they were helping as witnesses they were helping as people that knew that the work of the lord needed help in hand and so they will ask us help us not only that on top of that they will ask us apostles because now they were being transferred or being transformed or being promoted from being disciples to apostles and because they were apostles they will preach because they were apostles they will need to heal the sick because they were apostles they'll need to do great and mighty works and he told them whether you're asking as a son or you're asking as a kingdom citizen or you're asking as a minister or you're asking as a helper in the work of the kingdom or you're asking as an apostle of the lord you ask the Father in my name. And whatsoever you ask, the Father will give. Yes. Say good, good, amen. amen. Look at John. I'm looking at John chapter 16. And we're looking at verse 23. And in that day, that is the day after his departure. The day after he would have made the final sacrifice for our sin. He would have died on the cross of Calvary and then he would have been buried. He will rise again. He will appear to them. He will ascend into heaven at that day when they will not see him in the physical. At that day when they will be filled with the Holy Ghost. At that day when they will be alone in the ministry. At that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father, how do they ask the Father? Tell me out aloud, in my name, in the pastor's name, in your church founder's name, in an angel's name. You know, there are people, they carry pictures about, and they say, uh, the God of, uh, you know, the man in this picture, answer me. They don't understand the Bible. They don't understand how to pray and the principle that the Lord has laid down. And he said that she will ask the Father in my name, and what will be the result? He will give it to you. He that too will be asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive that your joy may be full your joy will be full uh, look at look at verse 26 at that day you see he was pointing them still to that day and he said at that day ye shall ask in my name he repeated it for them so that they will not slide back to the old things they used to do he told them in that day at that day ye shall ask in my name and i say not unto you that i will pray the father for you for the father himself loveth you the father loves you i said the heavenly father loves you i say it's because ye love me and i believe that i came out from God and because you have believed and you have given your life to the Lord and you are a member of the kingdom of God and you are a member of the family of God at that day you ask the Father he will give it to you I, again I want to remind you what we are looking at tonight the Father's answer to prayer in the Son's name the Father's answer to prayer in the Son's name there are three things we are looking at number one our confidence while praying in his name. Our confidence, the confidence we have, the trust we have, and the assurance we have that God will answer our confidence while praying in his name. Point number two, the character of petitioners. Those who petition, those who intercede, those who pray, those who ask the Father, the character of petitioners through his name. Point number three, the courage of perception. When you have proper perception of the word of God, proper perception of the provision of the Lord, proper perception of the goodness of God, proper per perception of what God said he will do, that gives you courage and boldness before the throne. And then any challenge you have with that perception, you know God is going to answer your prayer. I know God is going to answer my prayer. The courage of perception through his name. The courage of perception through 
his name. Let's come to point number one. Tell me number one over there. A confidence while praying in his name. Let's come back to John chapter 16. And here I'm reading from verse 23. John chapter 16, verse 23. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Underline that word, whatsoever. It says, you are the one that can put a limit on your prayer. You are the one that can put a restriction on your prayer. Because it says, there's no limitation in the mind of God. There's no limitation of the promises of God. There's no pro uh, uh, limitation in the provision of Calvary. It says, whatsoever, whatsoever ye shall ask. Who is the ye over there? I said, who is the ye over there? I rejoice with you from today. Whatsoever you ask the Father in the name of Jesus, he will give it to you. Yeah. And you can begin to think, can begin to plan. I'm going to ask this, I'm going to ask this, I'm going to ask that. And every prayer you pray, and you pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, that prayer will be answered. Look at this in verse 24. It says, He that too, and he has nothing in my name. He that too, until this point, you have been so limited because, you know, you had asked me directly, or you asked the Father directly. He says, but now, he says, you have not asked anything in my name. He says, but now ask. But now ask. Somebody there is going to ask today. Somebody there is going to pray today. He says, ask, and ye shall receive. I will receive and your joy will be full. Amen. Look at uh, verse 25. This six, have I spoken unto you in Proverbs? I've been talking to you in parables. I've been talking to you with illustrations. I've been talking to you with some examples. But now it says, the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in parables, in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. Verse 26 at that day ye shall ask in my name and i say not unto you that i will pray to the father that i have to be pleading and begging the father for you no for the father in verse 27 himself loveth you think about that the father himself loveth you meditate on that the father himself loveth you because she loved me do you love christ I said, you love Christ. That gives you assurance then that the Father loves you. And because you have believed that I came from God. As he tells us whatsoever we can ask, whatsoever we can pray for. And he said he will give unto us. Look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 12. John chapter 14 verse 12. Our confidence while praying in his name. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. If you have not started, you are going to start. Amen. The works of Christ you will do. Amen. The signs and the wonders that Christ performed through you, it will happen in Jesus' name. And greater works than these shall ye do, shall ye do, because I go unto my Father. Look at verse 13, and whatsoever, look at that again, and whatsoever, there's no limitation, and whatsoever ye shall ask, tell me, in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Look at verse 14, if ye ask, if he ask, if he ask, why are you not asking everything from the Lord? Why are you going about as if you are an orphan? Why are you going about as if you don't have enough provision in heaven? As if there is famine in heaven. As if there is scarcity in heaven. As if the needs you have cannot be met in heaven. From tonight, everything will change. You pray with confidence. You will pray with joy. You pray with expectation. If she shall ask anything in my name, 
I will do it. Look at chapter 15, John chapter 15. I'm reading here from verse 7. John chapter 15, verse 7. It says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, that's the condition. That's the condition. You cannot just fly off. You cannot be superficial. You cannot just uh, neglect the word of God. You cannot abandon the word of God. You cannot say, I'm not interested in that divine revelation. I'm not interested in the teaching of the word of God. All I want to do is pray. No, there's a condition. It says in that verse 7, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you. Look at this, look at this. Ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you tonight you will see that look at verse 16 verse 16 it says you have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and that was the next word there and that tell me the next word there is that for you I said is that for you and that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father, tell me, in my name, he may give it to you. And he always puts that, uh, you know, that in my name. Because they might forget, they might continue to ask the Father without going through Jesus. Or they might begin to ask Jesus without uh, remembering what he has said. He said, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, He'll give it to you. I rejoice with you tonight. Prayers are going to be answered. Yokes are going to be broken. Mountains are going to vanish away. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 17. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. A believers in the house today. These signs shall follow them that believe. What follows there? Tell me out aloud. In my name shall they cast out devils. They will go out. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. It will not hurt you. They shall lay hands on the sick. What will happen? They shall recover. So then, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and he preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following. And the church said, that's what he said he will do. Ask the Father in his name. And you believe and you trust. And you have confidence. And because you're asking the Father, and you're asking in the, in the name of the Son, the confidence we have, the assurance we have, the trust we have, is that God will answer. In Luke chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 17. Luke chapter 10 we're reading from verse 17. It tells us in Luke chapter 10, verse 17, 10, 17. It says, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us. How? Throw thy name. Not the name of your pastor. Throw thy name. Not your own name. Throw thy name. Not the name of the founder of a church, throw thy name. Not the name of an angel, throw thy name. Even the devils are subject unto us, throw thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. Amen. Weakness is gone. Amen. Timidity is gone. Amen. All that trembling and shaking is gone. The fear of man is gone. Pressure, oppression, sickness, everything is gone. Behold, I give unto your power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Thank God you are free. 
and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Written in heaven. We're coming to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. We're reading from verse 26. John chapter 14. I'm reading here from verse 26. It tells us in verse 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send, how will he send the Holy Ghost? In my name. You see that? The Father will send in my name. Salvation in his name. Sanctification in his name. The Comforter coming. The Holy Ghost baptism in his name. The healing in his name. The deliverance in his name. Answers to prayer in his name. He says whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. How did the apostles apply this? How did the apostles understand this? Did they turn around and or did they still continue praying the old way they were praying? Let's come to Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 and I'm reading here from verse 6. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 verse 6. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. Are you there? What are the words following? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Not in his own name, not in the name of his friend John, not in the name of John the Baptist, and not in the name of Moses. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, and he lifted him up like the Lord will lift you up today. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Look at verse 16. Verse 16. Verse 16. And his name through faith in his name. You see that? That's what Jesus said. Whatsoever you'll ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. And that's exactly what Peter did. And that man rose up because there's power in that name. There's authority in that name. Miracles come through that name. The breaking of every yoke comes through that name. Yeah, and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know yea the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all and look at chapter 16 Acts chapter 16 I'm reading from verse 16 Acts chapter 16 Read him from verse 16. It's always in the name of Jesus we pray. If, we, if I expect an answer, and as you pray, and you are confident that that prayer is passing to the hands of Jesus, and you are asking the Father in his name tonight, he will answer you. Every time, he will answer you. All those things are piled up, problem there, problem here, problem everywhere, they clear out of your way from tonight. Look at Acts chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. He started themselves possessed with a spirit of divination methods, which brought her masters much gain by suit saying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And they she did many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee, tell me, 
always like that. Make sure you remember that. Make sure you remember that. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Did he come out? Has to come out. It's not Paul. It's the name. It's not his stature. It's the name. It's not his title. It's the name. And if you say the same thing, it's not your stature. It's not your title. Once you mention that name, that evil spirit must come out. That sickness must leave. And that calamity must get out of that place. Once you mention the name, because he has given us the name, and it came out the same hour. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Philippians, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 5. Here is the reason why that name is mighty. Here is the reason why God always answers prayer that is prayed in that name. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, let this might be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Look at this. Wherefore, because of that, wherefore, because of his sacrifice, wherefore, because of his love, wherefore, because of the atonement that he made, wherefore, because he gave himself for the salvation of the whole of humanity, because of that, God has highly exalted him and given him, what? A name which is above every name. That name is above the name of any demon. It's above the name of cancer. It's above the name of any disease. It's above the name of any mountain. It says God has given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. Tonight, at the name of Jesus. In your life, at the name of Jesus. In your family, at the name of Jesus. Your Red Sea will part. Your mountain will move. Your sorrow will be taken away. Those tears will be dry tonight in Jesus' name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Any amen? amen. That's an amen in your life. Look at Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do, this is what he can do in your life, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek according to the power that worketh in the pastor, according to the power that worketh in the founder of the church, according to the power that walketh, is walking in you tonight. That walketh in us unto him the glory in the church by, Jesus, by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. And remember what, uh, you know, great promise the Lord has given us. It says, whatsoever you shall ask the Father, in my name, whatsoever. What do we ask as disciples? You are a disciple of the Lord. What are you going to ask? What do we ask as Christians? I'm a Christian. I believe in Christ. He saved my soul. I'm a convert and I'm following after the Lord. What can I ask as a Christian? 
what are you going to ask as a witness because he says he has sent us out as witnesses and as we're witnessing his name and as we're witnessing to his glory there are challenges on the witnessing field what am i going to ask we're going to ask also our servants servants of the lord paul the apostle always said i paul servant of christ servant of christ servant of christ as a servant of the lord and he has sent us to do something you know what are we going to ask and as workers in the via because he says we're laborers together with him as workers as laborers together with him what do we ask as christian leaders have laid the foundation another builder thereupon were christian leaders as wise uh, wise um, builders what are we going to ask the lord as pastors as apostles of the lord what can we ask the lord the least is unending but look at this, we can ask for righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then it says all these things shall be added unto you. Number two, we can ask for grace. We can ask for grace. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may receive help in the time of need. Not only that, we can also ask for understanding. Understanding. He gives wisdom. He gives understanding. If anyone lacks wisdom, if anyone lacks understanding, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and your brain is not. We can ask for victory over temptation. That's why Jesus said, watch and pray, that she fall not into temptation. And we can ask for victory, and from today, you will always overcome. Yeah. We can ask for courage to confess Christ and not to deny him, because he said, anyone that denies me before men, I will deny him before my heavenly father. But those who confess before men, I will confess before my heavenly father. And we need courage to do that because sometimes the situation is intimidating. Sometimes the situation is frightening. But the courage to confess Christ every time and never to deny him, the Lord will give you in Jesus' name. We can ask for fruitfulness because he says, I've ordained you that you will go forth and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain. You will not be spiritually barren. You will not be um, the family in the family. You will not be barren in Jesus' name. Fruitfulness in every way. We can ask for power, power, because it says, "Shall receive power after that really goes is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me." And then it says, "In Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth." And then we can also ask for guidance, because it says, "I send the Holy Ghost to you, and it will guide you into all truth." We can ask for opportunities. I said before you an open door that nobody will close we can ask for wisdom we can ask for christian experiences salvation is a christian experience sanctification is a christian experience baptism in the holy ghost is a christian experience we can ask for help in crisis you're at a crossroad you are in crisis there's a storm in your life there's a storm in your family you say help me lord and you're asking the father and you're asking through the name of jesus he will answer your prayer and uh, let's come back to john we're looking at john chapter 16 john chapter 16 i'm reading here i want to explain something in verse 23 there it says in john chapter 16 verse 23 it says in, and in that day ye shall ask me nothing verily verily i say unto you whatsoever ye shall ask the father tell me in my name in my name what does that mean it's like if you add a check in your hand and then it's signed by somebody you don't have any account over there in that bank but the person who has given you the check has an account there and then he's put his name there and then you go to the bank he doesn't even have to follow you and you get there and you tender that at the counter because his name is there and you are asking not in your name because you don't have any accounts there not in your name in the name of daddy because your daddy has no accounts there not in the name of your principal at school because principal doesn't have accounts right in that bank but you're asking in the name of the person that signed that check it will be granted 
whatever your height, whatever your posture, whatever your size, whoever you are, it shall be granted because in his name means by his authority. That's what it means. In my name, that means by my authority. It means on his account, on his account. He has account in heaven. He has all things in heaven. And because you are asking the Father, and you are asking on his account. That's what it means in my name. On his reputation. He has a name in heaven. He has a title in heaven. He has recognition in heaven. He has reputation in heaven. And you are asking on his reputation. You are asking number four on the basis of his status and his standing. His status and his standing is higher than all the angels in heaven. Is higher than anybody you can name from the beginning of the world to the end of the world. And because of his status, because of his standing, that's what it means in my name. It means, number five, on the basis of his title. On the basis of his title. He is savior. He is shepherd. Is our substitute, is the final sacrifice. He is Emmanuel. On the basis of his title, you can go and then ask the Father on the basis of the title of the Lord, your Savior. He will grant it to you. You begin to see it tonight. I said you begin to see it tonight. Number six, you are actually asking in his behalf. In his behalf. If he were here on earth, he'll be asking for that thing. And because he's gone to heaven, and you are now his representative, that's why you are asking on his behalf. You are asking, number seven, for his name's sake. For his name's sake. It's for his glory that you're asking. You want to be healed so God can be glorified for his name's sake. You're witnessing, you want the people you're witnessing to to have the, the, the breakthrough in their lives. It is because of his name, for his glory. And whatsoever you ask, as we take note of these things, praise the Lord, your answer has come. Yeah. Point number two now, the character of petitioners through his name. The character of petitioners through his his name. Let's come back to John chapter 16. Who are the people that can actually ask in the name of Jesus? Let's come to this in John chapter uh, John chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 23 again. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. The ye he was talking to here, these were believers. Even Judas and Scout was not there. Judas had gone out. The Pharisees were not there. The doubters were not there. The people that ridiculed him were not there. The people that blasphemed him were not there. The traditional people were not there. These were the disciples. And he said, in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Look at verse 24. He that told have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Look at verse 26. At that day, ye shall ask in my name. Ye shall ask in my name. And I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you. The character of petitioners through his name. Uh, you know, there are people that misuse the name of God. We're coming to Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20. I'm reading here from verse 3. Leviticus chapter 20. And we're reading from verse 3. It tells us in verse 3, Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 3. And I will set my face against that man. I will cut him off from among his people. Because he has given of his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. 
Those who profane the name of the Lord, they cannot just come and say, I'm praying in the name of Jesus while they're profane, well, they profaning that name. Look at verse 7. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be holy. For I am the Lord your God, and ye shall keep my statutes unto them, and I am the Lord which sanctify you. We're coming to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 5, reading from verse 11. We must honor the name, respect the name, and we must be obedient to the name. We must reverence the name. We're coming to Deuteronomy chapter 5. Five, reading from verse 11 it says thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain the people that are taking the name of the Lord in vain if they want to you know say something and they say to God Almighty they're swearing any little thing, they mention God. Any little thing, they mention Jesus. And they drag the name of Jesus to some foolish, foolish things. The Lord says uh, those people, they profane his name. They do not have the right to come and pray to the Father in the name that they have blasphemed. In the name that they have profaned. We're coming to Psalm 74. Psalm 74, I'm reading from verse 18. Psalm 74, we're looking at verse 18. Are you there? Psalm what? Hurry up, hurry up. Psalm 74, verse 18. Remember this, that the enemy has reproached, O Lord, and that the foolish people have blasphemed thy name. The foolish people have blasphemed thy name. Those who blaspheme the name of the Lord, what does the Bible call them? Tell me out aloud. Foolish. They are foolish. And he said, you cannot come like that without fully, without foolishness, and then come and say, I want this mountain to move in the name of Jesus. The name you are blaspheming. You cannot do that. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 52. And I'm reading from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 52, look at verse 5 here. Now therefore, what have I here, says the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught. They that rule over them, make them to howl, says the Lord. And my name continually every day is blasphemed. My name continually, every day, is blasphemed. If your life is so dirty, and then people are saying, uh -huh, there you are, he says he's a Christian. Not him, ordinary Christian. He says he's deeper. But look at the defiling things he's doing. And look at the terrible thing he's doing. And you make people to blaspheme the name of the Lord. Then you cannot turn around and come to say, in the name of Jesus, nothing will happen. Look at verse 11 there. In verse 11, it says, depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from this. Touch no unclean sin. Go ye out of the midst of her and be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Come to the New Testament in Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 24. Our lives must be clean and our mouths too, our tongue shall be clean, cleansed and crucified so that we can mention the name of Jesus and heaven will give attention to our prayer. I pray God will give attention to your prayer. Look at Romans chapter 2 verse 24. Romans chapter 2 verse 24. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. The name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. And if that is the life we live and people are insulting Christ and they are blaming Christ and they are casting as passions on Christ because of our lives, then we cannot turn around and say, I'm asking for this in the name of Jesus, the name that we don't honor, the name that we don't reverence, the name that we don't appreciate. We're coming to Second Timothy chapter 
2, verse 19. Second Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 19. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ tell me, tell me out aloud. Depart from iniquity. If you're going to ask the Lord and say, Almighty God, here is my mountain, remove it in the name of Jesus. Here is sickness, take the sickness away in the name of Jesus. Here is a challenge, help me solve the problem in the name of Jesus. If you're going to mention the name of Jesus, you are going to name the name of Christ. It says, Depart from iniquity. Iniquity will not be in your life. Iniquity will not be your lifestyle. He will cleanse you. He will change your life. He will turn you around. And then with a clean heart and a clean mouth and a clean tongue and a clean lifestyle, then you can come with confidence and say, Lord, here is what I'm asking, and the Lord will answer your prayer. And look at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 17. Colossians chapter 3. We're reading from verse 17. It says, And whatsoever ye do. See that? And whatsoever ye do. In word or deed. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks. It says whatsoever you do. Anywhere you are going, anything you are going to do, anything you are going to touch, anything you are going to say, your character, your lifestyle, and the behavior of your life. It says you make sure that everything is glorifying to God. If it is glorifying to God, then you'll have confidence and you can come and ask the Lord for what you want him to do for you and the Lord will do it. Uh, let me show you some people. They didn't have that understanding. They just said, name of Jesus, name of Jesus. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19. Uh, it tells us from verse 13. Acts, chapter 19, reading from verse 13. It says, then certain of the vagabond Jews exorcists took upon them to call over them which have evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus. They took upon themselves. They say, he said, we can cast out devils. He said, if you believe, if you're a child of God, if you have been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, if you're not using your tongue in a sinful way, and if you're not into anything that is occultic, that's when you can do that. It says these people, they wanted to call over these the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by, the, by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of one scaver, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. Tell me, where are you coming from? You are not saved. Satan knows those who are not really saved. Evil spirits know those who are not really saved. And when they come and they say, I command you, I adjure you, as if they want to perform magic, I adjure you. But when you're a real child of God, and you're cleansed, and you're purged, and you're purified, and the blood of Jesus has washed you whiter than snow. You can face any devil and you can say, I command you in the name of Jesus, come out. It must come out. Yeah. But look at these ones. It says, they told them, the evil spirit told them, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and the Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. I thought somebody would say amen then. Look at Psalm 50, Psalm 50. 
We're reading from verse 16. If we're going to pray to the Father, and we're going to pray in the name of Jesus, we must make sure that we're living the life that honors God. Look at Psalm 50. I'm reading from verse 16. Psalm 50, verse 16. But unto the wicked, God says, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant or my name or my promise in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction and casteth my words behind thee. When thou sawest deceiver, then thou consentest with him and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue framest deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, and thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. It's telling us there that if we are living in sin, if we are living in evil, and we have not repented, and we're not living clean lives, righteous life, through the grace of God, if you say you're using the name of Jesus, it's a waste of time, because heaven will not respond uh, to people who are hypocrites. Heaven does not recognize them, and you don't have any authority to use the name of Jesus. Those who are hard-hearted sinners, God does not recognize them when they mention the name of Jesus. Those who are backsliders and refuse to return. They refuse to have their ways clean. Those who are online fraudsters. They are fraudulent and they go online and they do all these uh, terrible things. And then they say that, you know, I'm, I, I'm a church man, I'm a church woman, and I'm going to pray. God does not honor the prayer of such people, those who are false representatives of Christ. And those who are adulterers, or those who are swindlers, or those who are fornicators, or those who are cheats, he doesn't authorize them to use the name. Neither will he recognize them when they use that name. I pray you'll not be like that. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And I'm reading here from verse 9. It tells us in verse 9. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Reading from verse 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, no idolaters, these ones cannot choose the name of Jesus until they are converted, until they are born again, until their lives are turned around. It says, no, ad no adulterers, no the effeminate, no abusers of themselves with mankind, no thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. They are not kingdom citizens. Therefore, they don't have any authority and they don't have any recognition in heaven to use the name. But look at verse 11. And such were some of you. You are no more like that. I am no more like that. I said I am no more like that. But she are washed. Thank God the blood of Jesus can wash us clean. But she has sanctified. The blood of Jesus can sanctify us. But she had justified. He had justified. Tell me, tell me. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. When that has happened and then we're true disciples of Christ. When that has happened and we're true servants of the Master. When that has happened and we're true servants of the harvest field. That has happened and we have become true laborers in his vineyard. When this cleansing has taken place, justification, forgiveness, salvation has come and we're stewards in his household. 
when that has happened and we're sons in the family of God and we're followers of the master we were true warriors on the battlefield for the Lord then the name of Jesus will be mighty and powerful in our mouth and tonight that name is mighty and that name will do wondrous things in every life tonight in Jesus name but we must have repented. We must have been born again. We must have uh, known that all our sins are washed away in the blood of the Lamb. And because of that cleansing, because of that conversion, because of that new life, now we can come to the Father and make use of that name and the Lord will answer you. In First Peter chapter 4, First Peter chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 14. First Peter chapter 4, reading from verse 14. If he be reproached for the name of Christ. You see that? If he be reproached, insulted, abused, opposed, whatever, persecution. If he be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. Glory upon you. I said the spirit of power upon you. Yeah. On their part is evil spoken of. But on your part is glorified. But, verse 15, let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evil doer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if anyone, any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that will be not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God, your suffering persecution, commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. And then the Lord will answer your prayer. Yeah. Coming back to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. We're coming to point three now. The courage of perception through his name. The courage of perception through his name. I read here from verse 28. John chapter 16, verse 28. I came forth from the Father, and I'm come in, into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no parable. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things. He knows all things about you. And he solved all the problems of your life in Jesus' name. Because of his knowledge, because of that revelation, and because of his power, and because of his love, all those mountains will move away in Jesus' name. But we must have the assurance that these people had when they said, we know and we're very sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. But start your one, Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, to his own. And then he goes on to say, And shall leave me alone, yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Look at verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye might have peace. I thought you will say that. Yeah. You'll have peace in Jesus' name. Yeah. In the world, ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome 
the world. They had perception. They had understanding. And they had insight into the revelation that Jesus Christ was giving unto them. There are four things here. Number one, their perception. Their perception. They knew that Jesus came from heaven and is going back. He was going back to heaven. Look at uh, chapter 17, verse 11. Chapter 17, verse 11. And now I'm no more in the world. But these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, for that they may be one as we are one. Look at verse 13, and now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Look at chapter 16, verse 25. Chapter 16, verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. Now they receive the plain teaching, the plain revelation. And they add understanding, they add revelation, and they add perception. Chapter 6, verse 69. John, chapter 6, verse 69. And we believe and are sure. We believe and we're sure. I believe. And I'm sure. I believe. And I'm sure. You know, that's the perception we need. Once we have that perception, and you're sure of the promises of God, you're sure of what Christ has provided, whatever the persecution, you are going to overcome. I see overcomers in the house today. You'll overcome in Jesus' name. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Number two, their persecution. The Lord did not deceive them. Uh, we, and we, must, they, we must not deceive ourselves. There could be persecution. And when the persecution comes, because you knew it ahead of time, and the Lord said, even though there is persecution, he has overcome, and you will overcome. Yeah. You will overcome. In John chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 31. Verse 31, and Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, now, now is come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, persecution, problem, opposition, but be of good cheer. Don't cry for the devil. Don't cry for sinners. Don't cry for the people. You are greater than them. You are higher than them. And whatever they are doing, it will stop when you mention the name of Jesus. Say good, good, amen. That's why I said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Look at chapter 15, John chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 19. John chapter 15, verse 19. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, ye are not of the world. I said ye are not of the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. And then he tells us in verse 20, Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sin, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you. For my name's sake, because... They know not him that sent me. And uh, the early church, when they were persecuted, they didn't go to a corner mourning and crying and saying, Oh me, look at what has happened to us. Look at what happened to them. As of the apostle chapter 8. 
Acts chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 3. Acts chapter 8, reading from verse 3. It says, and Saul made, as for Saul, he made havoc of the church and train into every house and healing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad, they were crying. They that was, that was scattered abroad, they were sorrowful. They that was scattered abroad, they backslid. If it's like that, I won't come to church again. If it's like that, I won't pray again. If it's like that, I'm going back to, you know, the Jewish religion. Is that what happened? What happened? They went everywhere preaching the word. Courage will come to you. Stamina will come to you. You'll have backbone to stand at the time of persecution in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 12. Second Timothy chapter 3. We're reading from verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. I will continue. And has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Let's come back to John chapter 16. We've seen their perception. We've seen the persecution. Now we'll see the peace, the peace. John chapter 16, we're reading from verse 33. John chapter 16, verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. You will have peace. Amen. Chapter 14, John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace, I live with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Neither let it be afraid. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. We're reading from verse 3. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Amen. Nothing will disturb your peace. Amen. The world will not disturb your peace. Amen. Problems will not disturb your peace. Amen. It says thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. I trust the Lord. I said I trust the Lord. Peace in your heart. Peace in your home. Peace in your place of work. Isaiah chapter 48. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 18. Oh, that thou art hearkened to my commandments, then at thy peace being as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Deeper than the ocean, higher than the sky, broader than any mountain. So will your peace be in Jesus' name. Philippians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. As you go back home, peace. As you reach home, peace. All the problems you left behind, they'll evaporate and vanish away in Jesus' name. We're coming back to John, number one, their perception. Number two, their persecution. Number three, their peace. Number four, they are prevailing, prevailing. You have prevailed. John chapter 16, we're looking at verse 33. John chapter 16, and we're reading from verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you, 
that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world and because he lives in you you too you will overcome the world first john chapter 4 we're looking at verse 4 first john chapter 4 we're reading from verse 4 it says in first john chapter 4 verse 4 ye are god's little children anyone of god there today ye are god's little children and have overcome them. All those satanic powers, you have overcome them. Yeah. All those occultic people, you have overcome them. Yeah. All those enemies of progress, you have overcome them. Yeah. All the things that frightened you before and you could not make progress, you have overcome them. Yeah. Sickness that you know they said this one will kill so and so, this one will kill so and so. Thank God, not me. I say, Thank God, not me. I say, thank God, not me. You have overcome every disease, every demon, every mountain, every challenge, every difficulty, every problem in your way. You have overcome in Jesus' name. Ye of God, little children, and I've overcome them because, because, because greater you see that is seen in you than he that is in the world victory has come yeah. i said victory has come yeah. first john chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 14 first john chapter 2 we're reading from verse 14 i have written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have preached unto you, young men. Look at this. Because ye are strong. Any strong person there today? Ye are strong. And the word of God abideth in you. And ye have overcome the wicked one. I thought the house would say better. Amen. I have overcome. First John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 4. First John chapter 5, reading from verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Look at verse 18. You must underline this one. Look at this. We know that whosoever, who is that? we know that whosoever I said who is that whosoever is born of God sinneth not and that he that is begotten of God keepeth himself read the rest for me read it out aloud are you sure of that tonight I said are you sure of that tonight and that wicked one Touches him not. He will not touch you. Yeah. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 37. Romans chapter 8. Reading from verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Make it personal. Make it personal. Nay, in all these things, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. Say that again. Nay, in all these things, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. Say that once again. It will happen tonight. Let's come back to John. We're looking at John. We're looking at John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verse 23. And in that day, this is the day. Ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name. He will give it to you. He that too have ye asked nothing in my name, ask, 
Are you going to pray tonight? Ask, I said, are you praying tonight? Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Your joy may be full. And look at uh, chapter 14, chapter 14 of John, chapter 14 of John, here from verse 13. And whatsoever, and whatsoever, make the prayer broad, and whatsoever, make the prayer deep, and whatsoever, make the prayer extensive, and whatsoever, ask for everything spiritual, everything physical, everything in the workplace, everything that you need according to the promise, and whatsoever, ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. Tonight, that will I do. In your life, that will I do. In your family, that will I do. In our local churches, that will I do. In the church at like that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Here is your promise, verse 14. If he shall ask tonight anything in my name, I will do it. If he shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Do you have any prayer request tonight? I said, do you have any request tonight? Do you have any prayer points tonight? Is there a mountain that must move tonight? Is there a problem that will be solved tonight? Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord and understand? If you shall ask anything, anything, anything in my name, I will do it. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, tonight is the night of answered prayer. Tonight is the night of bringing a request before the Lord. And whatever it is, however terrible that mountain may be, however terrible that challenge may be, you can ask tonight, you can ask tonight, you can ask tonight. Tonight, and you have the assurance, you have the assurance that tonight is the night of answered prayer. It will answer you. It will answer you. It will answer you. If there's any sin there, confess the sin, it will forgive you. If there is any weakness there, your righteousness there, tell the Lord, he'll strengthen you. If there is any kind of backsliding there, he will restore you. He will restore you. That's what he has promised. He said he will do it. He said he will do it. Why don't you open your mouth and say, Lord, I am here tonight. And you said whatsoever. You said whatsoever. You said whatsoever. You ask the Father in my name that I will do it. And I'm asking you, Father, and I'm asking you in the name name of my Savior, Jesus Christ, I'm asking tonight in the name of the one who died for me on the cross of Calvary, and he said he will do it. That mountain must move. That problem must go away. That weakness must vanish away. He'll make you strong. He'll make you strong. He's strengthening you in the inner man. He'll send you to be righteous. He'll strengthen you to be holy. He's strengthening you to walk according to the will of God. He's strengthening you to be obedient to the Lord. Whatsoever, 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 whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, He said He will do it. He said He will do it. He said He will do it. Why don't you ask right now? Why don't you ask right now and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. I am not weak anymore. Here I am. I'm not cringing anymore. Here I am. I'm not overwhelmed anymore. Here I am. I'm not sinful anymore. The blood of Jesus washes whiter than snow. The blood of Jesus washes whiter than snow. He'll cleanse your heart. He'll cleanse your mind. He'll cleanse your spirit. He'll give you assurance. Assurance of salvation. Assurance of restoration, assurance of righteousness, assurance of knowing the Lord, and assurance of walking in with the Lord. Ask him, ask him, he will do it. As a father, as a father, that mountain must go. As a father, that river must be dried up. As a father, that sickness must be healed. As a father tonight, and the answer must come. Ask him ask him and you ask in the name of Jesus everything we ask in the name of Jesus will be granted every prayer we pray in the name of Jesus will be answered every difficulty we present to the Lord in the name of Jesus that difficulty must melt away and every incurable problem incurable disease that we present to the Lord that thing must vanish away tonight Tell him, tell him, tell him uh, his answer prayers tonight. His answer prayers tonight. And all the things of God are set back. 
all the setbacks you can tell the lord tonight you're moving forward you're moving forward that red sea will part before you that difficulty will clear way before you if you shall ask anything in my name i will do it if she shall ask anything in my name i will do it incurable disease will vanish away mountains will vanish away the torment of the enemy will vanish away all those hazards of life everything will clear away the yoke will be broken all the causes will be removed because tonight is a, a night of answered prayer whatsoever 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 you shall ask the father in my name i will do it whatsoever whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name he will do it you can ask god for grace he'll give you grace you can ask god for strength he'll give you strength you can ask god for healing he'll give you healing you can ask god for deliverance he'll give you deliverance you can ask god for power he'll give you power you can ask god for holiness he'll give you holiness you can ask god for breakthrough he'll give you breakthrough you can ask god for joy unlimited joy you're speakable he'll give you joy you're speakable you can ask for the solution of your problem in your family it will solve the problem in your family you can ask for all that sorrow all that sadness to vanish away and it will vanish away you can ask for the fullness of joy and that fullness of joy will come you can ask for peace 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 deep as a river and the lord will grant you that peace whatever it is you're asking tonight whatsoever you ask the father in my name whatsoever you ask the father in my name whatsoever you ask the father in my name that he will do that he will do that the father may be glorified that the Father may be glorified. Ask Him, ask Him, ask Him, ask Him. Sanctification, holiness, ask Him. Holy Ghost baptism, power, ask Him. Authority, ask Him. And a breakthrough in your life, ask Him. Open doors of opportunity, ask Him. Authority and power, authority and power, so that nothing will stand as a stumbling block before you. Ask Him, He will do it. Ask him, he will do it. Ask him, he will do it. Whatsoever, 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 whatsoever you're asking tonight, he will do it. He will do it. Have confidence, have trust in him. And then the courage of perception. The courage of perception. Are you persecuted at home? Ask the Lord for strength to stand in the place of what persecution? At the Lord for the grace to stand anywhere you are and it appears as if the problem is overwhelming you and the problem is greater than you can bear ask him tonight it will strengthen you ask him tonight whatsoever 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 ye shall ask the father in my name ask the, your request in his name ask your request in his name make your prayer in his name in his name and he will grant it to you. He will grant it to you. Tonight is a night of answered prayer. Don't just keep quiet there tonight. Tonight, tonight is the night of your answered prayer. He wants to answer you tonight. He wants to answer you tonight. The answer is there. The answer is there. The answer is there. The answer is coming. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Lord, tonight is the night of victory. Tonight is the night of power. Tonight is the night of overcoming. Tonight is the night to conquer. And conquer every evil sin. And conquer every demonic sin. And conquer everything that comes against your life. That prayer you'll be praying for a long time. That's it you'll be asking for a long time. Tonight is the night of delivery. The Lord is delivering it to you tonight. The Lord is delivering it to you tonight. And he says, my son, I've had your prayer. My daughter, I've had your prayer. Don't cry anymore. Don't weep anymore. Because the answer has come. The answer has come. Because whatsoever. Because whatsoever. Because whatsoever. You ask the Father, in the name of Jesus, it will be granted. It must be granted. Because God is a faithful God. And Christ is faithful. And the promises cannot fail. And you're standing on the promises that cannot fail. 
You're standing on the promises that cannot fail. Stand on that promise. Stand on that promise and take everything that the Lord has promised you tonight and say, Lord, this is part of the whatsoever. Lord, this is part of the whatsoever. Lord, this is part of the whatsoever. And it will fulfill your joy tonight. It will fulfill your joy tonight. It will grant you peace tonight. It will grant you victory tonight. It will give you the overcoming power tonight. Behold, I give unto you power. Behold, I give unto you power. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And from tonight, nothing shall by any means hurt you. This sign shall follow them that believe. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They'll take up those serpents and throw them away. They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They'll speak with new tongues. And after the Lord departed, they went forth everywhere, declaring the word. And the Lord confirming the word was signs following. Signs are following tonight. Signs are following tonight. Behold, I and the children whom God has given me were well, for signs and for, the, and for wonders in the land. Behold, those children that God has given me were well, for signs and wonders in the land tonight. Signs upon your life, wonders upon your life, glory upon your life, answered prayer upon your life. Yes, that's what he said he will do. That's what he said he will do. Call upon the Lord, he's answering your prayer right now. Call upon the Lord, he's answering your prayer right now. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. He says, whatsoever, 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 you shall ask the Father in my name. He will give you. If, if he ask anything, if you shall ask anything, if you shall ask anything, anything in my name. Anything in my name, anything in my name, he said, he will do it. Why don't you tell the Lord tonight, and you're sure tonight, and you're sure tonight, that everything we ask, everything you ask, everything you demand, in the name of Jesus, must be granted. Why are you going to go back home empty-handed? Why are you going to go back home weak? Why are you going to back, go back home poor? Why are you going to go back home still sorrowful? Why are you going to go back home still having need in your life? Because if he shall ask anything, if he shall ask anything, if he shall ask anything in his name, in his name, in his name, he will give it unto you. He must give them unto you. It's done tonight. It's done tonight. It's done tonight. He cannot fail. His word cannot fail. His power cannot fail. His spirit cannot fail. Is there for you tonight whatsoever? 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 Have the confidence, have the assurance that he has granted what you are asking for because he said it, it's done. Because he said it, it's done. Because he said it, it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Your prayer is answered. Who am I talking about? Your prayer is answered. You'll go back home with joy. Go back home with assurance. Because all those enemies that traced you here, you'll never see them again in Jesus' name. He has answered my prayer. He has answered my prayer. He has answered my prayer. What are you there? Raise up both hands. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the glorious promise that we have been given tonight. That whatsoever we ask the Father in the name of Jesus is answered, is given, 
and therefore I know for every brother, every sister, every girl, every boy here, I know you have answered their prayer. Confirm it in Jesus' name. Every request table before you, I pray that those requests, you say amen to them. Assurance to them. Answers to them. Confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Salvation. Forgiveness, redemption, peace of mind, grace of God, joy of salvation, victory of salvation, righteousness in everyone, purity of heart, power of the Holy Ghost, healing for the sick, deliverance for the oppressed, and the courage to move on in life for everyone in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, the things that chased your people before in the past, they stop right now in Jesus' name. Your Red Sea is divided. Your mountain is moved away. You can move forward now. You will move forward now. Breakthrough for you. Promotion for you. Prosperity for you. And Lord, I pray the good things you have done tonight will not end in their lives in Jesus' name. Continue to bless them. Continue to overwhelm them with your blessing in Jesus' name. Answer for everyone. Miracle for everyone. Power for everyone. Victory for everyone. You've got it, you will not lose it. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray.